this particular section from St. Paul to the Ephesians is one of the places that um, Protestants in their ignorance will point to and say, you see, Catholics are wrong. Now, if you're well rooted in the faith and, and you understand Christianity well, you might, you might hear me say that and think, what are you talking about? What was weird about that? What was, what was, uh, what was not Catholic about what Paul was writing to the Ephesians? That sounds perfectly fine to me. And you'd be right. It is totally perfectly fine. And this is what frustrates um, a lot of Catholics when they're talking to Protestants about, uh, about the faith. Protestants will come up with an objection, and, and we're, oftentimes we're like, well, wait, there's nothing wrong with what you just said. Right? What's, what's the problem here? The problem is that they become exclusive. All right? um, what a heresy really is, when, it, when it's really boiled down to it, a heresy is rarely actually something that's wrong. A heresy is usually something that has become so um, large in a person's mind that it excludes other truths, right? So um, a heresy might say, well, uh, Christ, is, Christ is a human, a human being. Okay, yeah. And a Catholic would say to that person who's saying, well, yeah, but he's also God. And the heretic, though, would say, no, 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 he's not also God. He's, he's only He's only man. That, that's how a heresy oftentimes works, right? And the church, as we, as we say often, is, is, is very, very often a both and situation here. Here's what, here's what Paul's saying. Uh, God's rich in mercy, great, because of his great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ by great, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And the Protestant's like, aha, see? Gotcha. And, and we're like, wait, why? That's true. We're saved by grace. And continue on here, raised up with him and seated with him in heaven, the ages to come, uh, uh, that he might show us his immeasurable grace and his kindness uh, to us in Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Ah, see, you're saved by faith. Now, wait a minute. I thought you just said we were saved by grace. Yeah, by grace alone. And by faith? Yes, and by faith alone. These are the arguments of, of, of the Lutherans in particular, the solas, right? Sola fide, sola gratis, sola scriptura. Um, and they'll say, yeah, see, Paul says here, you're only saved by grace. And he says also, you're only saved by faith. Okay, now you're, now you're confusing me there, my Protestant friend. And this is not from you. It is a gift of God. It is not from works so that no one may boast. See? We're not saved by works. The Catholic would say, nobody's ever said that we're saved by our works. We do works because we're saved. We do works because God allows us to cooperate with him, right? So I, I bring this up and I, I, I kind of set up this straw man. Protestants are smarter than, than I'm making, a, making them seem in this, uh, in this little argument here. It's just my foil to sort of present this is that the, pro the problem often when we, when we talk to people who misunderstand the faith isn't necessarily that they've got everything wrong. It's that they don't have everything right. When we deal with our Protestant brothers and sisters, it's important for us to acknowledge and start on the ground that we, that we have correct, right? Uh, let's say we're talking to a, a Protestant and they're like, they're doing that Protestant talk. You know how Protestants have like this, vo like this vocabulary? They, they get preachy. You ever, you ever experienced that? No? Nobody's ever experienced that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So there's this like dialect that they go into when they start talking about Jesus. When they start getting like that, that's when you're like, yeah, brother. Yeah. Jesus is Lord. Absolutely. There's your starting point. That's a wonderful thing. You could start there, right? Because they've got that right. That's good. But then what we want to do is we want to lean into what they're missing and not look at it as they're an enemy because they don't know something about the faith or because they reject something because they misunderstand that Jesus wants you to have it, but rather to lean into that and say, you have, you have this, this, this part right. It's so good that you have that right. But there's so much more that Jesus wants for you. So much more that God wants you to have. You believe Jesus is Lord, that's wonderful. But even Jesus said, not everybody who cries out to me, Lord, Lord, will be saved, but only those who do the will of the Father. Now you tell me 
that Paul says it's not by works that we're saved. But Jesus says it's not everybody who cries out to me, Lord, Lord, who saved, but those who do the works of the will of my Father. So let's, let's understand that correctly. Let's understand that as a both and. Let's understand that, the, yes, in Christ Jesus I'm saved. By his grace I'm saved. By his cross I'm justified. All of this is a gift. And in that gift he allows me to cooperate with him in that salvific work. As St. Paul says, in my own sufferings I am making up for what is lacking in the, cro- in the cross. Excuse me. In, my own, in myself, I am making up, in my own, so how does he say it? Jeez. In my own suffering, I am making up for what is lacking in the cross of Christ. Man, you just, you just put everything that God wants for us together and it makes this beautiful tableau of, 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 of salvation history, right? We don't, we don't have these weird static snapshots of, of salvation history that is oftentimes presented um, in, the, in the Protestant mindset. So my, my point in saying this is not that you need to be able to re-articulate everything that I've just said, but rather to understand the way that Paul and scripture and religion oftentimes is misunderstood, misappropriated, misused by those who protest against the, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. To not look at them as enemies, but to look at them as friends, as brothers and sisters who are, who are hungry, who are starving, and they don't know that they're malnourished, right? To bring them to the table and to show them everything that they're missing. Not because we want to say, ha ha, I have something you don't, but to say, see, my friend, do you see how full is this table that the Lord has set for you? Why do you limit yourself to only eating the potatoes, why do you limit yourself only to eating the, 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 the bread? Why don't you eat everything that the Lord's put out for you, right? So that you might be properly nourished, so that your soul might be robust, and so that you can rise to the occasion of allowing yourself to be saved by God and allowing yourself to cooperate in that salvation in a way in which you can then say, I have merited this with you.